Hey camera nerds, wonderful to be with you here again, deep in the nerd cave, and I'm joined today by GAF1 and GAF2. Of course, GAF stands for Gratuitous Anamorphic Flare. It's been a huge couple of weeks, just finished up this massive music video that we shot out west, and the last time you would have seen me was when we were out doing a recce for that, hanging about $50,000 worth of camera gear out the window of a moving vehicle like a responsible adult. That was really the beginning of this weird DIY journey I've gone on learning how to do vehicle rigging. I should say right off the top that if you've got the budget and the space in your crew to hire a grip who knows what they're doing, you should totally do that. But in this real new world that we're living in, that's not always an option. To quote some of my more annoying corporate clients, we all need to find ways of doing more with less. Blech. And that's why I've kind of gone on my own little journey of working out how to do this, and it's definitely been uh, a wild ride. Made some massive mistakes. Oh, okay, just pull over. Holy f And I'll share all of those with you as well as all the cool things that I found out. So why don't I just take it quickly back to first principles when it comes to trying to get a camera onto a vehicle, either to shoot people in that vehicle or to shoot things outside the vehicle. So some of you might have, as I did, started off with the basic six inch suction cup. You got a little C-stand knuckle there and a uh, platform to screw your camera into. And if you were like me, you were putting your Sony PD-150 DV camcorder on that bad boy. Am I right? Nice. From there, you'd probably find that you needed to upgrade to some kind of vibration isolation. When you're on the road, you've got the vibration of the vehicle itself. You've also got uh, the vibration from the road is probably the major factor. And you want some way of deadening that vibration, absor absorbing the shock so it doesn't travel through into your camera package and move the lens. So that's where you're going to something like the isolator I've got on top of this rig wheels cloud mount that I'll talk about in a sec. So you basically got a lower platform and an upper platform that are joined by steel cables on a curve and they've got the ability to slop around and take some of that shock and prevent the uh, camera from being affected by the lower vibration. From there, you've got to figure out how to mount that sucker onto the car. And that's where you're talking about something like this cloud mount, which we'll definitely get into later. And this one actually uses magnets. So that just, it's a pretty, pretty quick and effective way of getting onto the car. It definitely has some, has some limitations that I'll make you aware of. Um, but for quick setups, it's pretty handy. Um, and if you're not gonna go with magnets, you're probably gonna go with something like this 12 inch bad boy from Cinemild. So this gives you, look at all those mounting plates. Is there anything nicer than a good cheese plate? Am I right? Gee, I'm sad. And it's got all these really great little strapping points here that you can get your safety straps onto. You've got some wings out here that you can put uh, grenades or scaff starters on uh, to set your rigs up off. Um, and this guy, I think it's got something like 115 pounds of payload. Don't quote me on that, but it's definitely a lot. We used two of these to put our Moco system on the side of a car, which I'll talk about later. That was a big success. Um, and then you might be combining it with something like this handy little right angle plate that I got from Kupo. Uh, so we had that on the side of the car and then a right angle and then we were able to put the Moco rails on top of that right angle piece. One of the ways that you would see a lot of grips rigging cars is off the back or the front using tow hitches. And that's where something like this Cine Mill tow hitch mount comes in really handy. You'll often see it with something like this scaff clamp, two of those mounted on either side. That gives you the ability to send a couple of speed rails up off the tow ball of your car. Uh, or as we call them in Australia here, scaff pipe. Hey Baz, go get us a bloody stick of bloody scaff pipe, mate. These are made to go into the tow hitch of your car, so you take the tow ball out and put this into the receiver. It's worth noting that here in Australia, our receiver is slightly smaller than America, so the Cine Mill guys have kindly rounded off the edges of this one so it fits in nicely. And rather than using um, speed rail or scaff pipe, um, I've just bolted the uh, isolator directly to this. From there, you're getting up into more hardcore levels. It's probably uh, something, you, n you never know, I might have a crack at it down the track knowing me, but it's definitely more into dedicated grip territory where you're running a scaffold structure from the car, whether it's from the tow ball or from, from some suction cups, and then you're running something like the Flow Cine black arm off that, um, then with a vibration isolator and underslinging a gimbal and then a camera. So that's sort of the gold standard of vehicle tracking until you get even further up into things like moto cranes and Russian arms and all that crazy stuff. Um, so they're the basics of vehicle rigging and, and some of that's what I've been playing with. Um, but really it's all sort of come down to this combination of 
a camera as small as the Komodo that still has the power of red code raw, which I honestly believe is the greatest codec known to man. One thing that I have kind of been playing with is uh, this little Franken rig that I came up with that you might have seen me post on social media. This has the ability to zoom, focus, iris, wireless HD video, and it's got something akin to a mimic mode, similar to the mimic that you get with a Movi or something like that. So if I flick on this little switch on the side here, you'll see it can now respond to my movements, which is pretty handy. And we just did a shoot with a skater, a good mate of mine, Matty Nice, who just shot with us a lot on our music videos. And we'll show that at the end, the results are pretty cool. And look, what I'm gonna show you now is a fairly condensed version of several weeks of testing. I could have been, you know, uh, more arrogant and just shown you the very last step of it where we got it right or got it pretty close to right. But then I kind of thought to myself, is it cool to pretend that you know everything? No, no it's not. And can other people benefit and learn from my terrible mistakes? Yes, yes they can. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're going to go through several stages of learning, several stages of gear acquisition and integration and a whole lot of mistakes along the way. And the first phase that I'm gonna to talk to you about is using this Rig Wheels cloud mount. So when we found out that uh, this music video was gonna involve a whole lot of tracking with a vintage vehicle, the challenge was how can we get through as many setups as possible both shooting the guys inside the car and putting the camera on my four wheel drive to shoot the car on the road. Um, and I went through a lot of different um, gear options and eventually settled on this cloud mount just because it's magnetic. It's just something that you can snap onto the car quite quickly and get going. Um, so the first thing I tried to do, I actually ordered this with the hostess tray option. So what that gives you is the ability to put this on the side of a car and then you get an extra platform that comes out this way so that the camera can sit here and you can be looking into the car this way or you can be looking out. If you have the gimbal on top of it, you can obviously pick and choose which way you want to look. So I strapped that one on the side of the Prado one Sunday when the family needed to head over to see the grandparents, had the kids in the back. And look, the camera didn't fall off, so that was a good start, but it was a little bit shaky, learnt a few things. So let's have a quick look at the results of that one. We're having a drive over to the grandparents' place, which seemed like the perfect time to strap the Komodo to the side of the Prado using the rig wheels cloud mount and the babies are in the back and we'll see what happens. First time I've had it on the side of the car. I really need this to work. So let's see what happens. Let's go, babe. So I've got the crane remote here, which gives me a little joystick control. And I couldn't, I, I'm still having trouble getting the remote focus on the crane system to work with their focus motors. So I've gone with the trusty RT Motion Latitude system uh, to be able to pull focus. So the cloud mount's got its own vibration isolator that the crane is sitting on top of. Okay. I don't know about anybody else, but my butthole's pretty tightly clenched. Let's see what happens. Open road. Ah! Holy shit! Yep, gotcha. I, 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 I something. Okay, so... I see some trees. At the moment, I don't have iris control, and I'm also missing NDs, which I'm still waiting to arrive. So at the moment, I'm sort of opened up a little bit for the interior of the car. Uh, so when it swings around, I'm just going to kick it old school and uh, reach out and iris it up myself. Do you, buddy? That's cool. Yeah. Little guy's in the back, you can't quite see him. He's a big camera fan. I'm gonna spot the trees. Okay. And we've got the red control software running wirelessly here on the iPad, which is pretty cool. So I haven't had to mount a transmitter for this. And look, the latency is entirely workable. So why don't we just take a punt and what I'm gonna do is iris down a little bit. I'm going to rotate the camera out and see what our tracking shot looks like. Might stop down just a little bit more. So far it looks pretty good.
Okay, so just let me jump in here at this point because when it comes to testing vehicle rigs and how stable they might be, the monitors that you're looking at in the car or on the camera, even when you're playing things back on a five inch or a seven inch monitor can be really deceptively good. You can look at it and just think, man, I'm the shit. That's some of the best vehicle rigging stuff that's ever been filmed. Then you go home, put it into the edit suite and look at it on a 30 inch screen and you realize that it's dog's balls. Like it's just all over the place. And what you definitely don't want to do is judge how stable your system is while viewing a monitor in the car that you're shooting from because you're subject to all the same bounces and vibrations that the camera is. So you'd be sitting there going, oh man, this is sick. Guys, you should see this shot. It's totally justifying my purchases. Oh, it's fantastic. It's not. And you're probably gonna have to buy more gear. So I strongly, strongly recommend that when you're creating a new rig or you're trying some new equipment, at the very least have a laptop on set that you can transfer the footage into and watch it on say a 15 inch or a 17 inch monitor. And if you can have the ability to take it home into an edit suite and really play with the footage, see what kind of vibration you're dealing with. Highly, highly recommended. So I'm relying on my beautiful wife to not drive into a signpost on the left hand side of the road and collect the camera off the car. No pressure, babe. <laughs> no pressure. You're doing a great job. All right. So I've got a uh, polarizer in there at the moment, circular polarizer, and some glimmer glass just to see what it does to the highlights when we're cruising around. So I might just try panning in. Whoa. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Okay. Just pull over. Okay, so the crane just lost its counterbalance there for a second. Looks like we got it back. <laughs> so if I just push that out a bit, I can pan past the... And we'll try some more inside the car stuff. See how well it holds for that. Okay, what have we got here? So that's pretty much wide open. That's 1.5 on a Solaire HS 25mm. Uh, like I said, I got a polarizer in there and a little bit of glimmer glass. So, you ready, babe? Yeah, I just can't see. Okay. Ready? When you're ready, let's try again. Go, Mommy. You can do it. You can do it, Mommy. You can do it. You can do it. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, squad, in the back. So as you might have noticed, there was probably a little more shake in the shot than you would really want in that sort of situation. I felt like when it was looking in the window at me or my wife across from me, that was a usable situation because when you're looking at people in the car, you expect there to be a little bit of uh, bounce and vibration that you would naturally have with road travel. Um, but when it came to looking out um, in other directions, you could definitely see there's a little bit too much shake. For me, I think that was a combination of the strength of this isolator and also not really knowing as much about gimbals as I probably should. I'm not really a gimbal guy, I've admitted that previously. And what some people have told me since is when you're using an isolator in conjunction with a gimbal, you can get into some kind of a feedback loop, almost like audio feedback, where the isolator is trying to compensate for the vibration of the vehicle and the road, that freaks out the gimbal and then the gimbal movement puts motion and inertia back into the isolator and then they basically go into a loop and start fighting each other the whole way. So what the guys who are good at this tell me, guys like Mick Smith and Mark Toyer, shout out to those dudes, uh, is you really wanna dial back the strength of your gimbal motors right down to the lowest setting you can and still having it hold its position. Uh, and, and when it's down in those lower levels, it's not gonna fight as hard against the isolator and you won't get as many of those tremors. So that about wraps it up for phase one of my DIY vehicle rigging journey. Join me next time when we discuss rear toe hitch mounts.